almost every trade magazine these days has something about 3D printing in it. So there's some at least one article in every magazine that I see about 3D printing. Whether it's realistic or not, it, it's there. So my name is uh, Phil Vickery. I'm the owner of Centerline Engineered Solutions, located in Greenwood, South Carolina. Uh, and basically we're a fabrication uh, business. We have uh, uh, machining, we have uh, laser bend, uh, welding, uh, we have CNC uh, machinery, we have uh, manual machinery. So that's kind of what we do. We're, we're, we also do engineering. So we build and custom design equipment for our, our, uh, our customers, industrial customers. So if a customer has a need, they have a problem, we work with them to develop a solution. The, the challenges that we run into from a, a fabrication standpoint and machinery is often a customer will come and it's a, they only need one of something. Uh, and they, they usually need it very quickly. Um, and it's difficult to, uh, to cost effectively make one uh, apparatus. Uh, and, and that's a, a big challenge that we have is I have to have uh, employees that are flexible and in a lot of different trade skills in order to, to turn around one specific part and one specific uh, item. And a lot of times what we'll have to do is we'll have to build fixtures and, and other apparatus in order to make that one part or assembly uh, as it may be. And that's some of the big challenges that, that we face is going from you know, this individual part to this individual part. Um, and you know, the challenges with the workforce, it's, it's always challenging to find uh, and, and keep qualified people um, who uh, know how to uh, run manual machining equipment, CNC machining equipment. I think everyone in fabrication throughout the United States is faced with the same thing. Uh, that's also part of where the 3D printing comes in is that with a, a 3D printer, uh, you know, it's very precise. And, and I can utilize some of uh, the things that a manual machinist does with a 3D printer. Uh, and that comes in the forms of jigs and other things so that I don't have to have a machinist work two hours to make something that's going to allow us to make something else. I can use a 3D printer straight off of a CAD system to, to make that. Well, on this particular part here, we, uh, we have the inventions and if we had to have, get that die made, say, out of metal or whatever, we'd have to send off, have it made. It probably costs two to three thousand dollars. That's where they, I think, they made this one in five, six hours, and and it did exactly what we needed it for. But for specialty dies, this works out real good, and uh, we could use it over and over. And if it does wear out or, de or damaged or whatever, we could make another one and be back up five, six hours. But uh, if I mess up a die that we send off to have made out of metal, it could be another two or three thousand dollars. So it saves a lot of money, time, and we're able to design specialty type dies for special parts. On this particular job, it's just, it just speeds it up. I mean, you know, because you can spend a lot of time on specialty parts trying to get things to work. And by them being able to do it in the front office, you know, if, let's just say I ordered a die and it wasn't right, you know, what are we going to do? We got to send it back. But as far as here, uh, the little problems that we have had, we've been able to correct it. So it, it just works out good. Uh, so I wanted to kind of get on the, the path now. And, and looking as I started the investigation and evaluation, I saw that that a lot of the printers, especially the Mark Forge uh, product, the, the parts were, were very strong and much stronger and much more durable than what I expected. Uh, so that kind of led me down to the path of there's probably some applications now where customers have always used this part out of metal because that's the only option that they have. Yeah, so before the, the, the Mark Forge, uh, um, we basically had no offering around 3D printing. All of our fixtures we, we made, we made ourselves. So instead of one of my machinists um, 
working on a production part or making a part for customers, a lot of times they were investing an hour to two hours to make a fixture so they could make a part. The other aspect, I mean, my customers are industrial customers and, and getting them to open their eyes to 3D printing. You know, that's a, also been a big opportunity for me and what I've been spending time doing. And, you know, I, I look at it from my business standpoint is, you know, I could have bought a top of the line, you know, five axis piece of equipment that anybody else uh, around here could have bought and, and started to use. And it really didn't bring many more capabilities to my customer base. But 3D printing, that's something new to my customer base. That's something that they don't have and don't even really have a good concept of how they might could use it. So it enables me to, to open up a different line of communications and opportunities to my customers.